What's going on, everybody? It's Dan here, back with another Moonshine Talking. Uh, today, I figured I'd talk about some Sabbath clone bands. We'll just call them that for the purpose of this video. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I was just listening to a lot more Sabbath. Uh, ever since I got that uh, Anno Domine box set, I've been digging more into like the lesser known versions of Sabbath. And then I got, you know, on top of all the other stuff I listened to, I was just like, eh, I'm going to listen to a little bit more, listen more doomier stuff. And then I thought it'd be kind of a, kind of a cool video to point out for people who aren't like huge, huge fans of, of doom or, or Sabbath type stuff. But you know, as we all know, Sabbath are pretty much, you know, one of the, probably the first metal band in in the history of music. You know, the entire genre has pretty much branched off of, of what they started. And Doom in particular is one of those genres that, yeah, it's pretty much, that's where it all started. That's where it all came from. All, all the bands that have come, they pretty much paved the road. So uh, I figured I'd just point out a few of the bands I like and introduce people to them if you've never heard of them before tell you a little bit about what I like about them and, and yeah that's pretty much the idea here uh but first as always I like to get a few news and notes out of the way I was sad to hear about this I, I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not I probably not but I just pointed out here I don't know how many of you huge wrestling fans I don't know how many of you follow wrestling and have followed it for years but Kevin Sullivan passed away today. I, I don't know what he died of. Apparently he had some health issues. He was in his mid-70s. Uh, for those, those of you who don't know, Kevin Sullivan was a legendary figure in the business, particularly in the Florida uh, Championship Wrestling, Championship Wrestling from Florida days. He traveled all over the world. He wrestled for WCW for decades he was also a booker for them he sat under the learning tree of eddie graham while he was in florida uh before wcw which is probably what a lot of people know him from he was uh most known for his time in championship wrestling from florida doing his army of darkness gimmick uh which is basically he basically took the whole idea of the satanic panic of the 80s and he created this entire cult of of characters. And the whole purpose of it was to run roughshod and terrorize all the Florida wrestlers, all the Florida faces like Dusty Rhodes and Barry Windham, uh, Blackjack Mulligan, uh, Mike Graham, you know, all, all those guys. I mean, and it was a killer gimmick. If you're into metal, then you would definitely get into this because it certainly had the Army of Darkness had the aesthetic. Uh, they brought to the forefront a lot of they gave gave shots to a lot of people who nobody really ever heard of before. Uh, most notably being Luna Vachon. Well, I don't know if any of you are familiar with her, but she went on to have a really good career. Uh, Nancy Sullivan, his wife, uh, she was the fallen angel, and then she went on to become woman in WCW and ECW, and then back to WCW, and then uh, eventually she ended up marrying Chris Benoit, and you know divorced Kevin Sullivan, uh, married Chris Benoit, and then we won't get into what happened there. But if you, I'm sure most of you have heard the story over the years because it made national news. But anyhow, yeah, he was very instrumental in the booking in the '90s. Uh, there's a guy James. He has a channel called wrestling shoot interviews and he he does uh podcasts with a lot of different uh well-known and well-regarded wrestlers uh he does a fantastic job if you want to go uh go online and see anything about about kevin sullivan he did a really good thing on him a real good tribute but anyhow yeah it sucks you know he was he was a very instrumental figure in the business and another another legend dies uh so rest in peace to Kevin Sullivan, you know, my condolences to his family and all that. Not that any of them are going to see this, but, you know, you just try to be respectful and whatnot. Um, and then uh, yeah, I saw something else today where uh, the new Alien movie is coming out next week. So I'm kind of excited about that. You know, we'll see how that goes. Uh, apparently the first reviews are saying, oh, it's so great. It's, be it's the best one in the whole franchise. And yeah, we'll see about that. But I'm excited. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm going to go see it in the theater. It's one of the few things I'm looking forward to this year. Uh, so we'll see how they do. Um, and then I'll probably end up next week, I'll probably do a review on that after I go and see it and let people know what I think. 
uh, for whatever that's worth and then go from there. But yeah, that was kind of cool. And then other than that, just uh, getting ready to, you know, as you can see, I'm in my Sunday's best here. So I'm getting ready to go work out, but I figured I'd bang this out real quick before I went and did that. And then the day would, you know, escape me and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I want to start off with uh, a couple of the lesser known Sabbath stuff that I just got recently. I got this uh, seventh star. I've picked up a copy of that. Um, the case got messed up, but don't worry about that. Uh, and also I picked up a, a copy of Born Again. I didn't have a copy of that. Pretty much with the exception of Eternal Idol and Technical Ecstasy, which I go down to my record store. I actually forgot to do it yesterday when I was there. I picked up a couple other things. Uh, the the Sabbath thing that I, I showed everybody yesterday. I'm not going to pull it out because it's it's too far away. You can kind of see it in the corner there, but there's a piece of it poking out. But I didn't pick that up. But anyhow, I'm babbling. Uh, yeah, the Seven Star one, I can see why a lot of people don't really regard that as much. And I can see why it's called a Black It's Seven Star featuring t Tony Iommi. It, it's just very generic commercial rock. Uh, there's a couple good songs on there. I, like, what did I... I think Seven Star was good, and there was another one on there that, that was pretty decent. Uh, but for the most part, it was just meh. It was just very... It, it was very subpar, I, I must say. Um but this Born Again, I, I like that one. Uh, to show you kind of this, the CDs are kind of cool. You get a little blue and red one. It was double double disc. Uh, there's a there's some live stuff on there. This is the one with Ian Gillen. I, I know most of you know that, but I'm just pointing it out uh, from Deep Purple. And it's cool. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Disturbing the Priest, uh, Zero the Hero, which... I was I, I forgot to do it, but I was gonna pull that one out. But <laughs> there's a killer, killer a Cannibal Corpse version, a cover of Zero the Hero, which I love that one. It, it was on the Hammer Smash Face EP. They also did uh, The Exorcist by the Possessed, or they did it by Possessed. Excuse me. Um. Yeah, Hotline. That's that's a really good one. Uh, Digital Bitch is all right. But yeah, that one's really, this is killer. I mean, it's definitely one of the more underrated ones in their catalog, but I, I enjoy it. I, I don't know how many people rate, how high people rate it on in as far as their Sabbath list of, of albums and stuff, but it's a pretty underrated one, and, and I enjoy a lot of it. And it's kind of cool, the novelty of Ian Gillen being in the band. It, it doesn't have a like a proper Sabbath sound, but it sounds really cool. And then on the live album, uh, that one's really good. Uh, you hear him do smoke on the water and the place goes nuts because, you know, it's probably one of those deals where it's like, holy shit, it's Sabbath doing smoke on the water with Ian Gillen. So they went nuts and you hear him singing along and everything. And just hearing him do stuff like Iron Man and and War Pigs uh, is really cool. Uh, I'm sure it's, in a sense, it was probably at the time, the novelty of it was really, really cool. Just seeing the two forces combined, like seeing you know, basically Deep Purple and Black Sabbath combined was probably cool. So I'd probably shit a brick when I saw that back in the, if I got to see that back in the day. Uh, but yeah, that was that. And then as far as, you know, now we're diving from the masters into their apprentices. I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. Uh, I'll start with uh, Count Raven. I don't know how many are familiar with Count Raven. They're a doom band from Sweden. They formed in 1993. 989 excuse me they're not that old uh <laughs> but um yeah they had six full lengths and one split uh don fondelius i think he's the the chief band leader songwriter uh there's a bunch uh they've had a couple couple different rotating members in the band for the most part but he's like the main dude in it uh, as far as the stuff I actually own of theirs, because they have, like I said, six full lengths, High on Infinity, which this one's okay. It's honestly, it's, again, the word of the day is subpar. Uh, I thought that uh, Madman from Waco is really cool, a song about David Koresh. Uh, Jen, the opening track is really good. There's a couple other decent ones on the album, but by and large, 
it's like 71 minutes long and it's it's kind of like you know at times it's a slog getting through it it's just kind of very like i say it's just there you know it's background music there's really nothing special about it but the one that i really like is destruction of the void that came out the year prior i'm sorry i don't have a case for it that's a whole story that we won't get into uh but this one came out in 92 on nuclear blast actually a uh, high on infinity if you're ever interested it's on cyclone empire i'm not really familiar with that one but this came out on Nuclear Blast. This one's killer. That's the first thing I ever got from them. I picked it up at Rock Fantasy way back in the day, uh, back when I was a, a young lad. And it's got, it's just got great, great doomy stuff on there. Uh, Destruction of the Void, the title track is really good. Uh, my favorite songs are probably No One's Hero. Uh, the Final Journey is probably my favorite song on the album. Uh what else did I? Leaving the War Zone, that's a really good one. Uh, it's just very, very fuzzy, uh, very, very, very slow and molasses y as far as the riffs and everything like that. Um, there's nothing reinventing the wheel. Uh, Don has a very, very Ozzy like approach to his vocals. He sounds very much like Ozzy, which isn't a bad thing. But yeah, that's a good one. I, I definitely recommend if you've never heard that one, uh, go check it out. Those would be the songs I recommend if you want to start somewhere and check them out. That's what I would do. But yeah, that's Count Raven. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with this band. We're going to go to Canada. The Chevy. They, they formed uh, in 1993 as Green Machine, which is kind of cool because that's they named themselves after Kaya's song. Uh, they do more like, it's not so much doomy, it's more rock, more up-tempo rock kind of thing. Uh, but it's definitely heavy, uh, but it's not like typical heavy, if that makes any sense. They had nine full lengths, uh, a greatest hits album, two splits and an EP. They, uh, yeah, and this is the only one I have of theirs. I got to beef up my, my discography on them, but this one's a pretty cool one. Here, I'll even, uh, here, let's open it up a little bit. That's the... That's the inside. That's the interior. Let me see if I can pull the records out without making a making a big mess here. Because I think the records were kind of cool looking. Here, I'll pull one out. This one was a limited edition that Rise Above Records put out. Yeah, there's it's just standard blue. Uh, it this is one fifty nine of seventeen hundred, I believe, was the deal on this one, and all right i'm not messing with that right now i'm not wasting your time watching me struggle with getting a vinyl out of a out of thing uh, but yeah this one's really cool i mean as far as the songs on there uh i'd say probably uh the opener virtual machines a really cool one uh there's a song uh the oracle's a really cool one they use a didgeridoo on it at times which is kind of neat uh the closer stardust is really good that's a really strong closer uh, one of my favorite tracks on it's called Savannah, which is about the porn star Savannah who killed herself. I know back in the day, the channel E, E channel, they did a whole one of those, not like behind the music, but one of those like freaking documentary expose, like dark side of the ring or true Hollywood stories. I think that was the name of it, like behind the music, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's really, you know, it's kind of sounds sappy to say, but it's a, it's a very beautiful song about such a, a tragic person and and how her how her life kind of just went off the rails uh being being in that industry and you know and it happens sometimes if, if stories like that are unfortunately pretty commonplace in in the adult industry but anyhow um uh, yeah that's a killer one that came out in 1998 and that's really good i mean i can't say enough good things about that album it's one of my favorite of all time I'll, I'll play that six days a week, twice on Sunday. That's how much I enjoy that one. And then finally, we got this this bad father mucker here. Uh, this is band Iron Man. They formed in 98 in Maryland. They started as a Sabbath tribute band. Uh, Al Morris, the guitar player, he was pretty much the only constant, consistent member of the band. And they they're just a straightforward dirty grimy just friggin 
and nasty, all those sorts of adjectives. Doom is uh, very straightforward, very guitar driven. Uh, the way they incorporate the bass into the songs is really cool. Uh, they had they had a bunch of like I say uh, Al was the only consistent member. So they had a bunch of rotating members. Uh, the one album of theirs they had uh, five full lengths, three EPs, three live albums. The last thing they did was a live album, Hail to the Riff. Uh, I believe in 2018 Al Morris passed away. He had stomach or pancreatic or one of those awful versions of cancer. That is you know it just is what it is. Um, but the one album that I have of theirs, I, I heard about them years ago. I was reading Metal Maniacs, and they had like an encyclopedia uh, version of Metal Maniacs in edition one time. And they showed off all these different bands. And it was just like, to me, it was like a checklist of all the things I need to listen to. And I was like, okay, get that, get that. And they were one of the ones that were on there. I never bought any of their stuff back in the day. Nowadays, it kind of gets hard to find. You can find it on Discogs, but there's not a lot of places that you can really find a lot of their stuff. I've heard all their stuff. It's all killer. Uh, Generation Void, I Have Returned, The Passage, uh, Black Knight. It's all all good, good stuff. If you're into Doom, this is definitely a band. They're severely, severely underrated, and I would, I would recommend them highly. But this one, South of the Earth, this was killer. I picked this up from Eddie at Realms of Metal, uh, from his Realms Rock web store. Again, Cheap non-paid plug, realmsofrock.squarespace.com. Go check him out. He's got killer stuff there. He's a good dude, you know. But this is this is the band. I'm not gonna do a edit in of all the the pictures. You can see friggin' rock and pentagram stuff. The obsessed. Yeah, that's Al at the forefront there in the Iomi esque jacket. Uh and the vinyls I am going to try to pull out because these were kind of cool looking. But this is a killer, killer album. Yeah, nice sweet purple, purple vinyl on one. Uh, probably my favorite songs on it are going to be the opener, South of the Earth. And. A Horn Confession. That one's just crazy. The lead singer, uh, Screaming D, Screaming Dave. He's got an amazing voice. He's got just phenomenal range and and the wails that he gets out of his voice. It, they're, they're just, they're fantastic. Fan friggin' tastic. I mean, I, there, there's a couple on, on each of the sides of the album. The, the songs, the last song on it is are always probably like the best showcases of his vocal ability. And they're just phenomenal. Yeah, you check out this. I don't know if you can see all the, yeah, there we go. Get a better idea. Yeah, look at that. Like a bomb going off. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty killer. But yeah, that's... uh. Wow, I went longer than I thought I was going to on this video, but that's usually with the case with me. Um, but yeah, those are just a couple bands. If, if you're into... You're trying to seek out different bands that are more along the lines of Sabbath and... Are a little bit more underrated these are bands i would check out so hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you found it entertaining um got more stuff on the way uh like i said i kind of teased it earlier probably next week i'm gonna do a review on alien romulus and do all the other crap that i do i gotta by the time you see this i think my fulci uh fulci album review will be up uh and yeah that's that um that's all I got for you. I got to go work out. It's getting to the point where I, I got to get up and get moving. Uh, not sit behind a computer ranting into a microphone. But anyhow, as always, stay sick, stay heavy, stay brutal. Always tuck your chin upon impact. Don't forget to breathe. Everybody, have a good weekend. Enjoy it. In, in, enjoy the, the sunshine and the daylight and the fresh air. Hopefully fresh air. Hopefully you don't have neighbors that are smelly and gassy or whatnot. Uh, and yeah, just take it easy. And I will catch everyone on the next one. Later.